What's up guys, how's it going? I have a 500X, which I love to use, but I also have stomp boxes, which I also love to use, but I've always felt kind of conflicted, you know, like it's kind of just one or the other. But you know, the 500X does have an effects loop, and I've kind of been playing around with the idea of integrating some of my stomp boxes with the 500X, and kind of having uh, the best of both worlds, but you know, I've kind of been like, thinking like, what's the point? Like there's so many built-in effects on the 500X, can I just model anything that I want? And while that is like mostly true, I do feel like there's just something special about, you know, individual stomp boxes. Like the, sometimes they just have a character that you just can't quite replicate. So in this video, I wanted to try to patch in a couple of my favorite uh, stomp boxes and just see how they pair with the 500X. So uh, first up, I'll patch in a Walrus Audio Descent Reverb, and then I'll swap it out for a Kaisman Midnight Drive, and uh, we'll just see what happens. So uh, give me a second to plug everything in, and uh, let's do it. Now that my reverb pedal is patched into the effects loop, I need to enable the effects loop. So to do that, we're gonna add it just like we would add any other effect block. So we go to our 500 ec, ec, 500 ec. We'll just go to an effect block. We can go to any effect block to add it, but because this is a reverb, I'm gonna try it out after the amp model. So I'll just go here. I'm gonna turn this first knob all the way clockwise until I get to effects loop. Now it's added and it is enabled. So here is my guitar tone before I turn the reverb on. And then I'll kick on the reverb. And just like that, I've patched in an external effect pedal into the effects loop of the 500X. The effects loop will work just like any other effect block. So we could assign a foot switch to it. So we could enable it or disable it uh, on the fly. Also, if we double click it, we can see some parameters that we can adjust. The first parameter is send. And this is gonna let us decrease the volume that we're sending to our effects from the 500X. So if we turn the number four knob, it'll let us bring that down. Return, this is gonna let us increase the volume as it comes back into the 500X. And then the mix parameter, this is gonna work just like the mix parameter on any other effect. It's gonna allow us to blend the volume of the effects loop with the rest of the signal chain. And the other cool thing is we could assign that mix parameter to an expression pedal. So we could roll off or, or swell into whatever effects we have patched into the effects loop. So that's pretty cool. I like this Descent Reverb pedal a lot because it has some pretty cool options for adding in um, upper and lower octaves into the reverb. So I'll just throw some of those there. Now I could create a preset just by using the built-in effects on the 500X that would sound pretty close to the Descent, but I really like the Descent because it has three saveable presets, plus I can access uh, the current settings for a total of four sounds. So if I were to try to like recreate four different sounds just on the 500X, it would require using like a lot of effect blocks and a lot of the 500X's memory. So it's cool because I just have to add one effect block and now I have full access to, you know, whatever external effects I've patched into the effects loop. So the way that this effects loop is working is wherever we place it in the chain, at that point, our signal takes a detour. It gets sent out to our external effects, 
runs through the external effects, however many we have, and then afterwards it's fed back in, re-enters at this point, and then continues on in the signal chain. So it's as if we're adding this external pedal right there in our signal chain. So if we hover the cursor over it, hit the move button, we can then drag it around to different spots in the chain. And depending on where it is in the chain, it's gonna affect the way that the effects loop sounds. So for an effect like reverb, um, by putting it after the amp model and after all of our distortion and overdrive pedals, we get a much cleaner, more pure, pristine sounding reverb versus if we put the reverb in front of the amp model and ran it through our amp model and added overdrive to the reverb, we could get a more gritty, more gnarly, like lo-fi sounding reverb. So, you know, it can be fun just to try experimenting with patching in the effects loop to different spots. Oh, another thing is you can put it between the amp model and the mixer and do like a split channel. So you could put it on the left or right channels as well. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool with reverb. Let's uh, swap out the reverb pedal for this Kaisman Midnight Drive and let's see how the effects loop responds to an overdrive pedal. Let's do it. With reverb pedals, we can experiment with their placement in the signal chain. We can put them before the amp model, after the amp model. Usually it sounds cool either way. When it comes to drive pedals, however, we generally wanna put them before the amp model. So I'm gonna move the effects loop. I'm gonna put it somewhere towards the front of the chain. So I'm gonna do it after the compressor, but before my chorus effect. Just drop it right there. Let's hear what my guitar sounds like before I turn the overdrive pedal on. And then with it. Sweet. Sounds pretty good. Sounds really nice. There's a really nice blend with this external overdrive pedal and the built-in amp model. Now, I could just use the built-in Tube Screamer effect on the 500X, but what's cool about the Midnight Drive is that it's actually a two-in-one pedal. On the right side, it's an overdrive, and then on the left, it has a clean boost for extra volume for solos. <laughs> So what would have taken up two effect blocks now only takes up one by using an effects loop. Now, how would the overdrive sound if it was after the amp model? Well, let's take a listen. Kind of sounds pretty fizzy. Uh, it doesn't really sound that natural. Kind of sounds like uh, if you just plug like an overdrive pedal straight into a PA and don't use an amp at all. Just doesn't sound really that great. So that's why I generally always recommend running your drive pedals before the amp model. I've just been using one external effect pedal at a time just for simplicity's sake for this video. But of course you could chain together as many pedals as you want. You could get real crazy with it. And you know, one thing I've been thinking about as I've been preparing this video is maybe it would be cool to just patch in like one or two pedals just every time I use the 500X, just to like add some creativity um, and extra inspiration uh, when I play. I just think that would be kind of fun. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. Hopefully it was helpful. If there's anything that you need more clarification on, you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to post them in the comments. I'll try to respond to you as quickly as I can. I'm going to keep messing with this, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. So until then, see you later.